Hey there, it's Nathan Crane, and I want to share a quick story with you. A couple of years ago, my wife and my daughter and myself decided to go on a 100% raw food diet for about a year. Now, when we started this, we didn't realize how long we were going to do it. We thought, maybe we'll try it for a few months, maybe we'll try it for a few years, maybe we'll try it forever. <laughs> we didn't really know. But I realized at that time, through research and through experimentation, and through a lot of studying with different health experts that going on the raw food diet was the best thing for us at that time. And I really wanted to try it. You know, I had researched a lot about it. I had heard a lot about it. I heard good things. I heard bad things. And for me, I'm someone that says, well, let me test it for myself and see how it works. So we got a lot of experience in that year. And it taught us a lot about raw food. It taught us a lot about our own health. It taught us a lot about dieting and cleansing and enzymes and nutrients and all of that. And so I get asked a lot of questions about what diet is best for me, what food should I be on to heal cancer or heal disease or to increase my longevity, what kind of things should I know about raw food. And so in this short video, I'm going to try and clear up a lot of that as quickly as I can and share with you my experience I got from being on that raw food diet because please understand raw food is incredibly valuable to our body but at the same time there's a lot of misinformation out there about it and there's a lot of people that are out there convincing you that it is the best only diet on the planet and I don't fully agree with that as much as I love these speakers and leaders in the industry and they're wonderful people the truth is no it's not the best diet for every single person so let me clear up the first things first, right? What is raw food? Well, pretend I have a cucumber in my hand. I just pulled it from the garden or got it from the grocery store. I haven't done anything to it yet. That's raw food. I just pulled a head of lettuce from the garden or got it from the grocery store. I haven't cooked it. I haven't steamed it. That's raw food, right? I just pulled carrots or bought carrots. Nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, grains, anything that is in its natural state, fruit, bananas, berries, strawberries, blackberries, oranges, anything that has not been cooked is raw. Now, depending on who you talk to and depending on um, whose belief system you follow, if you don't heat your food above 105 degrees, or another school of thought is if you don't heat it above 118 degrees, then it's still considered raw. So what does that include? Well, that includes dehydrating, right, below 118 or 105 degrees, but it certainly doesn't include microwaving, it doesn't include boiling, it doesn't include steaming, it doesn't include any of these other things. So basically, it's either you eat it raw, or you blend it, right, which is still considered raw, or you dehydrate it below 118 degrees, so it's raw. Well, why would you do this anyway? Well, there's a lot of reasons why, and some of the benefits that I got from it are that it started clearing up my digestive tract, it started creating more clarity, cleanliness, purity in my body, and the reasons that this happens is because in the raw state, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, these 100,000, 80,000 plus medicinal edible plant species on the planet that we know about so far, are intact fully with their enzymes, their vitamins, their minerals, all these, uh, their amino acids, all these great things that our body pulls from these plants and says, I can use this to restore my cells. I can use this to regrow brain cells. I can use this to replenish my liver. I can use this to clean out toxins, right? So these plants have information in them. And to me, that's the most important part of plants is that Inside the plant, as part of the plant, the plant, there's information. And it goes way beyond nutrients and enzymes and amino acids and all this stuff people are talking about. It goes to energetic information, vibratory information that these plants have that our bodies need. You see, our scientists have no idea how many nutrients and vitamins and minerals and all these things are in these plants. They've only found a small percentage of them. There's so much more in them that we don't understand. And see, what pharmaceutical companies have done is they take plants, right, like the white willow tree, for example, they'll, they'll take the bark, 
right? Which has a sil a silly acid, a silly something acid, a silly salic acid, some kind of acid in it. <laughs> I don't remember the name. You can look it up, but basically, that's the acid that helps your body to not feel pain when you have, you know, an injury or something like that. So what do they do? Well, they separate one or two components of hundreds or thousands of components that are part of that plant and they say well this is the most valuable one and so we're gonna mix this with some chemicals and some other things and we'll create aspirin you see aspirin comes from the white willow tree what they've done is they they say well I think the rest of that stuff isn't important we just want this one or two components well the truth is when we do that we have no idea what we're leaving behind what kind of information what kind of nutrients, what, you know, all these different things. Man, who knows what in, is in that tree that we actually really need that support that acid that actually helps our body. So anyway, what I found out through this, this experience of trying this fully raw diet for very close to a year was that I had a lot of energy, I had a lot of clarity, but most importantly, I felt more in tune with what my body really wanted. I started realizing, you know what, I don't want those kinds of foods anymore. I don't want to put that in my body anymore. It just didn't feel good. It didn't taste good. It didn't give me energy. I might eat something and make me feel lethargic. Whereas if you're eating raw food, right, you go and have a big salad, you eat some carrots and an apple and some fruits some bananas and oranges or whatever, you're going to have more energy because your digestive system doesn't have to work as hard. Versus you go and have a big bowl of pasta, lots of grains, it's cooked, you got, you know, maybe some processed sauce on there, maybe you put your hamburger or, or beef or, or whatever you put on it, and after you're done eating it, you want to go lay on the couch and pass out for an hour, right? Well, because your digestive system is working so hard to process all this food that it's causing you to overwork and it's, and it's having to pull energy from other parts of your body. So when you're eating raw food, basically it heightens your energy, heightens your clarity, makes you feel better, cleans you out, purifies your blood, purifies your system. Now the other thing that I found out on, on a raw food diet is that it's not for everybody in the sense that, you know, being 100% raw all the time is not necessarily the best thing for every single person because some of our bo everybody's body is different. Everybody's needs are a little bit different. So some people are more in need of warmer foods. They're, they're more in need of like a cooked soup, really nice warm soup on a cold day. They're more in need of something that's going to warm them up. They're more in need of, you know, being able to process certain things like beans. Beans are really, really hard. Legumes, really hard to eat raw. You can sprout them and when you sprout them, you get a lot of nutrients from that. But if you cook them, then you help kind of break down some of the structure of it a lot easier for your body to digest. So my wife and I and, and my daughter, now what that raw food diet has taught us is it has helped us to incorporate a much higher level of raw food into our diet now. Now I eat cooked foods, but the difference between before that experience and, the, and, and how I eat now is that, you know, if I do have some pasta or I do make a homemade organic pizza or something like that, I put tons of vegetables on it. I'll put big handfuls of spinach or big handfuls of raw kale and then I'll put, you know, bell peppers and I'll put avocados and I'll put, you know, other raw and fresh tomatoes. I'll put lots of other raw so that the higher portion of my meal is fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, these plants that have been given to us to support our life. So when you hear somebody say, raw food is the only way and it's the best thing for you, it's not always true. But it is true in the sense that if you can incorporate more raw foods into your diet, if you know how to take raw foods and bring them into your daily life and you get to experience that, you will experience higher levels of health no matter what. There's no way around that because you're getting the living enzymes, you're getting the amino acids, you're getting the proteins, you're getting the vitamins, the minerals in their purest form. So for each individual person, it's really up to you to experiment and experience how you feel as you're incorporating more raw foods into your diet. Well, during this 
experience that my wife and I and my daughter were having, Nomi Shannon, who has been on a high raw or all raw diet for decades now, and she's been teaching people how to be raw food chefs. She's been teaching people how to incorporate raw food in their diet. She's really an incredible woman. I spent some time with her in San Diego. She's very brilliant. She's very caring and loving. She's very funny. She has that East Coast kind of hardcore, uh, but also loving attitude. And she asked me to be a part of her book. And so she asked me to be a part of what do raw fooders eat? And asked me for an entire week to track every meal that I had, every, every recipe that I had, every juice that I had, every blended drink that I had, every tea that I had, everything that I had from morning to night for an entire week. She asked me to track it, write it down, take pictures, and so that's what I did. I tracked it for an entire week and then she also asked me to share my story. And so in this book, I share more about my personal story than I've shared anywhere else publicly about my homelessness when I was living on the streets, about my drug addiction, when I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and everything unhealthy for the human body and the human mind, about my struggle and also some of the things I've learned that have helped me to overcome all those addictions and to live a life of happiness and clarity and freedom and meaning. And so I share all that in this book, plus I share my recipes. And so myself, along with 23 or 24 other raw food, uh, health expert type people share their stories and share their recipes. So part of this book, part of this deal she's put together, there's over a thousand recipes. There's six months worth of tracking. So you have 24 people who tracked for a week. You got 24 weeks. That's what, about six months. So you have more raw food recipes, juices, diets, uh, teas, cleanses, blended drinks, um, and basically how to take raw food and make it look and taste really, really good because you can make raw pizzas, you can make raw burritos, you can make raw lasagna, you can make raw everything because they're fun, they're easy, they taste delicious, and again, you're getting the raw food into your diet, which is really, really important. So if you're interested at all in experience higher levels of health, of having more clarity, of having a cleaner body, losing weight, I lost 25 pounds on a raw food diet. I didn't do anything different except eat more raw food. Uh, so you lose weight naturally, um, get more enzymes, more vitamins, more minerals, and a lot of cases increase your immune system. So any diseases, any kind of ailments, um, oftentimes will go away. Now again, it's not a cure-all, it's not like um, every person who gets on a raw food diet will cure cancer, though I don't do, though I don't do know people who got on a totally raw food diet and they did reverse their cancer. So it's not that that's impossible, it certainly happens for some people. People reverse their diabetes on a raw food diet. Dr. Gabriel Cousins has a lot of research on that. There's a lot of beautiful things you can do. But again, I'm not here telling you raw food is the only way. That's not my belief. My belief is you need to get in tune with what's best for your body and the only way to do that is to experiment and to incorporate more raw foods, more blended foods, more juiced foods, more natural, organic, healthy, plant-based foods. So if you're interested in any of that at all, I highly encourage you to pick up a copy of this book. She just released it. It's a really beautiful book. Um, it's digital. You can get it immediately. She has all the options on her website. I'll put a link below this video in the description. Um, just go down right below this video, look in the description, you'll see a link for what do raw fooders eat. This is volume number two. So I'm very excited, very honored to be a part of this book. Again, the story I share is more personal than I've shared anywhere else. And, um, you know, I share this with you because I think it will support you in your life and your journey and experience higher levels of health. So please pick up a copy of that book, read it, let me know what you think, come back to this video, let me know your comments, let me know your thoughts. I think you'll love it. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next time. Well, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called What Do Raw Fooders Eat, which is now called What Do Raw Fooders Eat One. And I, I was interested, personally, 
in knowing what other people eat is lot, even though I've been raw for almost 30 years and have dozens and dozens of raw food friends, the real truth is, you know, how do you really get into someone's life literally on a day-to-day -day basis and really know what they eat? Like my friends, we might eat out together at a raw restaurant or they might come over here and I'll make this fabulous meal that takes me half the day. So I had for the first book and the second now, a total of 70 people write down literally every morsel they put in their mouth for one full week. And this is people, all successful raw fooders. So that's people who have been doing it for quite some time. Some very famous people have done this and some very everyday people. I got people in the first book from India, from Croatia, uh, oh no, the Czech Republic it was. Just very, it, it was, everybody including me was so fascinated and let me tell you something i'm going to give you one of the big conclusions that comes from eating reading what 70 separate individual people ate for one week no two people eat alike whatsoever not even similar so what it's done for the consumer for the reader is they're learning by example some people they may identify with like one person in this book Philip McCluskey, lost 215 pounds. He was very morbidly obese, and he tried everything. And the moment before, literally the moment, for he was gonna go in and have the bypass surgery, and he hated vegetables, but he decided to try it anyways, and it's what worked for him. And in two years, he lost all his weight, and you should see him, he's like this really handsome dude. The stories are fascinating, and then some people you'll resonate with, some people you may not, and the feedback I've gotten, which has been huge, is how fascinating it is. And I myself, in doing this with these people, writing down all it, I'm like, oh, wow, why did I never think of that? Like, the last two weeks, I've been drinking this delicious, like, hot chocolate elixir that my friend Elena Love makes, that I've never made anything like it. It's so delicious. You learn so much.